Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 51 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Off to the races today with some more new Metacraft. Uh, so I did bump this out one bit further, and I think that brings me up to about four bars. You'll, need, you'll notice here I'm at 4.01 to 4.02-ish bars. Uh, we've got about four in the pressure chamber. So it's all kind of equalized out. I've used a lot of time in the bottle to get me to this point. Um, but as you can see, the, the redstone dust is enough such that it's turning off the redstone torch and hitting us right at four bars. So that's pretty good. That's not bad, right? So if we drop, then, you know, we'll, we'll you know, turn off the redstone torch, allowing the compressor to run. Done deal. Not too shabby. So what I'm going to do now is probably work towards getting some better fuel. I think that should be one of the first things that I work on. So I think LPG is probably what I'm going to aim for. Um, so I'd like to get a refinery controller and I'd like to find some crude oil in the world. Uh, if I may. So refinery controller and refinery outputs are what we're going to need. And the way this multi-block works um, is you put the refinery outputs on top of the controller and the more you place, the more outputs you can have. So if you only put two, you'll only get diesel and LPG. But if you put four, you'll get diesel, kerosene, gasoline, and LPG. I'm going to wait and see what I want to do because uh, I'm not 100% sure. I might want to just get all four and then process the kerosene and gasoline down to LPG so that we get some diesel, which we'll use for our lubricants, and then a bunch of LPG, which we'll use for plastic and fuel. That's my high level plan. Whether that's what winds up happening in the end is anybody's guess. In addition to that, we're gonna need to go find oil. Um, and, I, and I have to decide how I'm gonna handle oil uh, extraction and all that stuff, because I haven't quite figured out what I'm gonna do with oil yet. Um, I could get into create, but I've kind of not done a lot of create this series yet. Uh, so we don't really have a lot of infrastructure there for create. Uh, that's one option. Or we could just use whatever Pneumatocraft uses for pumping oil. We could try that. Um, is there any way to make oil? That's, that's always a good question, right? Um, so there's oil from Ad Astra. And then uh, I believe that there's crude oil from Pneumatocraft which uh, we can get with bitumous sand and red sand, but it's a very small amount that we're gonna get, and it's unlikely we're gonna find a lot of that, okay? Um, so that's probably not something that we're gonna get access to in large quantities. And there's Pneumatocraft crude oil. We could use Industrial Foregoing's laser lens to get crude oil. Um, what does the black laser lens do for us in terms of fluids? How did, what the, you guys. Now I remember why I always have my bow at the ready here. Goodbye, friends. So, a couple ways we could look into getting it. Maybe, let's start with world gen, and then if we wind up needing more oil... We can look into getting the black laser lens from industrial foregoing, which would mean getting into industrial foregoing, but then we can at least get basically infinite oil using this process, right? That might be might be doable. That might be cool. Yeah, because the only thing you're going to get for fluids is crude oil with the black laser lens. So that'll give me a very high chance of getting oil every time it processes. We only get 50 millibuckets, but... We can speed it up to the point where that becomes a reasonable amount. So let's start with world gen discovery. Uh, so for this, we're going to need a couple of ender tanks, uh, probably with black wool if we have it. If not, I'll just... What do we have by way of wool? We have one black wool. Can I just get a black wool? I need some black dye. What are you, enderling scrap? Huh, that's a thing apparently. Oh, cool. There's a charcoal recipe for black dye. That's neat. <laughs> so now I can get ender tanks with uh, black wool. Did I make two of those cauldrons? I did. Good. So now I've got a black, black, black ender tank, and that's what we're going to store the crude oil in. And that's what we use to transfer it back to Pneumatocraft land, right? So that's step one. Step two is finding actual crude oil. Now, it looks like there's some lakes of something that's blackish right outside my door. We can go see what that is. Hey, look, crude oil. That's cool. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that this is a very small amount of crude oil. 
And I think you can also find it uh, out and about in, in liquid, in the, in the water. Like this, I'm pretty sure, is a crude oil geyser. Uh, so is this over here. So is this one. I'm going to, I'm going to say that I'm pretty sure that's what those are. Um, it would be nice if I could find like a really large amount of the stuff, but it doesn't look like there's a super ton of it anywhere. But we'll see what we get. Um, so if we want that, Pneumatocraft pumps. Uh, there is the vacuum pump. Uh, no, that's not what we want. What do we got by way of pumps? Um, there's the fluid pump from Immersive Engineering. Uh, there's got to be a way from Pneumatocraft to pump up oil. I just have to go remember what the name of the block is. Let's see if we can figure that out in here. Um, tubes manufacturing. No. No. Components, machines, tools, semi-blocks, logistics, mob armor. How about oil? Oil lakes are far more likely to spawn deep underground than on the surface because of this assistance from tools like the seismic sensor is highly recommended. Crude oil has two purposes. It can be refined into high quality fuels and plastic. Um, the recommended pneumatic craft pressurized way to extract oil is with the gas lift, although fluid pumps from other mods can also be used. Yes. Okay. So that's what we need is the gas lift. So I remember this guy a little bit, a little bit. You have to like get stuff. You have to get like pipes and it'll drill down into the ground for you, which is cool. Right. If I remember correctly, because it's it's designed for there's going to be oil underground. Right. So you can put it kind of up. Now he needs pressure. Right, so we're gonna have to figure out a nice way to get some pressure, uh, which we can obviously do. And then what else do we need here? It requires pressure and drill pipes to operate. The gas lift places drill pipes downwards until it hits a liquid. When solid blocks are encountered, they will be dug up. This uses pressure proportional to the block's hardness. Cool. Okay, so then what we're going to need is, what are they called again? Uh, heat pipes? No. Drill pipes. Yes. Used by the gas lift to drill down. That's what we're going to want. Okay. So what we're going to want are a bunch of tubes, which I taught you how to make. So if I made you like 100 tubes, we can get like, you know. This many, and that would be cool. Now, we don't place them ourselves. The block places them. So we put them in there, and then we're going to need, uh, actually, we do need some of those pressure tubes, and we're going to need some kind of compressor. Now, does oil straight up work in a liquid compressor? Because that would kind of be cool. That would kind of be cool. But the main point of this is we want to get the oil, right? Um, and we also would need a starter then as well. But I should be able to attach you straight to the back. Is that the back? Kind of can't tell. Well, I guess they both sides have a little port thing. Okay. So I should be able to do that. And what does oil do? Like pure, straight up crude oil, like not refined at all. Probably not great. Yeah, it's really not great. It's very wasteful to go that route. So I might just go with the regular compressor. Um, and then we'll, we'll use coal for that. Is that fair? I think so. Okay. Um, and we'll see how that works out. Now, ideally we would set up like the don't go crazy process. Um, but I think we can add something on here as an add-on. So adds a built-in safety valve to the machine, automatically releasing some air if the pressure would rise into the danger zone. That's a security upgrade. And then there's speed upgrades and volume upgrades. So let's do security upgrade. Because I'm pretty sure we can do this. Is that this guy? Yeah, that's what we want. How doable is that? We would just need a couple of safety valves. Let's get two of these real quick. One 
two. One, two. Now, if I put you in there, what should happen is if we get to the danger zone, it'll automatically vent. And I'm hoping that that means this guy won't be allowed to get to the danger zone either. Okay. Now, what's your problem? Not enough tank space to connect a pump. Oh, look, he did the thing. He placed the pipes. And now we just need to, if I put you here, will you auto eject to the top? Because that would be so cool if you would. Status, action idling, depth two meters, cool. Pump and allow empty tank, pump and leave fluid in tank for filtering, retract drill pipes. I kind of like this one. Uh, and then when we're done, we can have it automatically retract the pipes up. So is there a cool way to auto output your fluids? Is there an upgrade for that? Dispenser upgrade, auto ejects flu uh, fluid to a fluid tank in the dispenser upgrades configured direction or any direction if none is configured, cool. And then there's also the security, speed, and volume upgrades, which are pretty standard, and we'll take a look at some of those uh, as time goes by. But let's get a dispenser upgrade then. Okay, and this will allow us to auto output to an adjacent uh, inventory. Okay. So I pop you in there and then boom, all the oil goes into the tank. Sweet. That is awesome sauce. Now, did I keep you all within a chunk? Relatively. Now you'll notice it's also picking up the fluids here, which is a little bit bad. Um, so let's make sure this area is chunk loaded for the time being. Um, but we're gonna run out of oil here very quickly, but we're gonna want the seismic dude to see if there's bigger things underground. So does this need pressure, you think? That's a good question. I'm assuming he does. This item is used to track down crude oil deposits and maybe other underground fluids, depending on configuration. When I right click, that will show whether or not a fluid deposit was found directly under the clicked block. Like that, no fluid found below. But if I do this, no fluid found below. But if I do this, found crude oil. Three meters below, at least 100 buckets. Nice. Okay, cool. So we can use this as a way to search for crude oil underground. And we don't need to pressurize this block, so that's kind of cool. And there is not a lot of fluid found below, is there? There's got to be a better way to do this, right? I'm assuming it goes all the way down to bedrock and looks for underground deposits, which are apparently larger than what you would find above ground. Now, worst case, I can always go looking in, you know, the ocean at those oil reserves, but I'm just, I'd really like to be able to find one and see what it looks like underground. And I had hoped that I would find something sooner than this. There's something I'm missing here. Nothing yet. All right, I'm going to come back in a minute and see if I can't uh, find something. And if I do, cool. If I don't, meh. But I'm not going to do this for that long on camera because clearly uh, this is going to get boring super fast. So I'll be right back. Well, no such luck. Uh, but that's okay because, you know, this thing is, again, visual bug. Oh, look, it's doing the thing. Look. It's gotten to the point now uh, where because it hit, you know, too much pressure, once it hits five here, beep, it drains it out. That's cool. And then this guy should never hit five and we should be good. So this is a nice way. Does it waste coal? Yes. That's the end of the sentence. I don't have anything else to say beyond that. I mean, if I wanted to, um, you know, I could I could do something here where I sense how much pressure is in there. I just don't feel like setting that up, right? We just did that. So yeah, now we're cool. All right, so now uh, let's teach you uh, how to make a couple things. I'd like you to know how to make this. Uh, and as a result, you need to know how to make the slabs. So I'll get you going. And then I need the controller as well. Uh, and you already know how to make the tank. So we're cool there. Uh, so now you guys go here and you can go and make me uh, a refinery controller. We just need one. And the refinery 
outputs we're going to want four of. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, there's something to do with heat on this one. I think it either needs heat or generates heat. I think it needs heat, doesn't it? Pretty sure it needs heat. So we're going to have to deal with heat. Um, I think we need a vortex. Is that what it's called? Yeah, vortex tube. Okay. Let's teach you how to make those. Because I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, heat's involved in this process. So let's pick a place. How about... You know, over here, would this be a good place to do the whole thing? I think, I think yes-ish. Now I'm hoping that when I replace this block with a valve, don't I have valves? I had more valves than I needed, right? Yes. Pressure chamber valve. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised to see that the valve was leaking air. That's a little concerning to me. Because now I'm going to have to break the block and lose a bunch of air pressure in order to add the valve to it. I'm wondering if I can do this fast enough. So yes, I can do it fast enough, but like, holy cow, is it still leaking? So that's not cool. Um, now you'll notice that this guy is back up and running. Um, which is fair, which is fair. Um, I don't love that. Oh, and look, the uh, the broken block is inside there trying to be crafted. Yeah, no, we don't need to do that. Extract all of these. Thank you. You might need to go into a chest of some description. Yeah, so we definitely lose a little bit of pressure there. I'm wondering if that's a bug. I feel like it might be a bug. Because, I don't know, I'm going to have to ask uh, the mod author to see if that's intended or not. Because I feel like... Yes, there's a valve there, but it shouldn't just immediately leak air um, unless you connect a tube to it, right? I would think. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, so for now, maybe I'll do it on this side since I've got all the redstone going on over there. Now, clearly we have, basically, we have a few places where we can build things, right? Here, here, and here. And technically we can put stuff over here as well. And then if we wanted to, we could go up and down. So we could have a basement too. So let's start with over here. Um, so what I'm gonna need is a refinery controller, right? Problems, no input fluid, not enough refineries. Wah, 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 wah. You'll notice as I add a refinery here, it's gonna open up a slot. Now there's still not enough refineries because we need at least two refineries to make this guy happy. But realistically, we're gonna want four and that's gonna be better, cool? Now this guy also requires heat. And there's also some poorly insulated blocks. 13 of the 24 block faces are exposed to the air, which wastes heat. Ensure no neighboring blocks are air blocks to insulate the machine for better performance. Okay, this machine requires or produces heat. And we'll talk about heat here in a sec. Um, but the gist is uh, heat can be applied by placing a block that generates heat next to the machine. Think of a vortex tube, fast but requires power, but also lava, fast but solidifies, and torches, very slow. To cool down a machine, remove the heat sources and or speed up the process by placing down heat sinks or cold blocks such as ice, packed ice, and blue ice. So the gist is if you want blocks to be hotter, uh, you can add certain things like lava and whatnot. Now, if we look at this, I'm just curious, lava, um, if we look at the heat mechanics here, there should be a there should be a thing here for heat. Block heat properties, sweet. Now you'll notice lava eventually cools down and turns into obsidian, so that's not ideal, right? So these are cold things uh, like cryofuel and liquefied source. Oh, that's cool, liquefied source is cool. Oh my goodness, look how cold cryofuel is. That's a lot of negative, <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a lot of negative C. Uh, yeah, well below absolute zero, I guess. Liquid hydrogen, that's gotta be like a bug, right? It can't be a real number, cryofuel. Uh, liquid hydrogen from mechanism is very cold, uh, but will eventually uh, condense down into blue ice. Um, neat, okay. So if you want things to be cold, this is one way to go. Dry ice turns into um, blue ice as it heats up. Okay, neat. Permafrost, blue ice. I'm looking for something that's like hot. I'm guessing we're gonna get there now. Uh, what's a good hot temperature? I'm looking for, is there something in the pack that will passively be hot and not cool down at all? That's what I'm just curious of. Cause I have no idea. 
A lot of these things are pretty moderate in terms of their temperatures. 27, I guess, is just, you know, standard room temperature, I guess. I don't know, Celsius. Uh, but now we're getting to hot stuff, right? Uh, liquid sodium, liquid steam, uh, molten plastic, blocks of uranium will turn into lead. Well, that's interesting. Heat capacity, 500,000. Neat. And then they'll, they'll cool down into lead. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I might want to go that route. It's a decent hotness, too. It's 165. So blocks of uranium might be... Right? And uranium blocks do the same thing from mechanism. Interesting. Uh, liquid lithium will cool down into ice. Blaze lanterns will cool down into glowstone. Okay. Nice. It's cool. It's, it's, it's interesting. Blaze burner smoldering. Ooh, from Create. Blaze burner fading. Kindled, seething. Interesting. Campfires will eventually delight. Spirit fire from occultism seems pretty hot, but it eventually turns into air. Torch won't decay, but I mean, its temperature seems high. Doesn't its temperature seem high? Thermal resistance, 100,000. I don't know what that means. Controls how fast heat is able to move into or out of the block. Higher values mean slower gain of heat loss. Okay, so 100,000 means it's going to take a really long time to transfer. Okay. What was uh, uranium sitting at? Uranium was only 500 thermal resistance. That ain't bad. That ain't bad. I don't think it's great, but it's not bad. Okay. Yeah, torches are crazy high. Okay. So I might try uranium just to see. Now, what's our target temperature here? Because that's the other thing. If we look at the recipe for crude oil turning into LPG, which is the one that I want, I want this one. I think it's anything greater than 100C. So I think it's the hotter it is, the faster it runs in this block. Some blocks have like a range. So you want to be in between that range. And if you get too hot or too cold, it stops working. I think for this one, it's just the hotter it is, the faster it runs, which is cool. So realistically, the hotter, the better, right? So let me look at those heat sources again. So I'm pretty sure if I'm reading this correctly, um, the, the coldest stuff is at the beginning. So this is in temperature order, right? So coldest stuff is the first one. Hottest stuff is the last one. So I could get liquid uranium oxide. How hard is that? Uranium oxide is just yellow cake uranium. That could be cool. Heat capacity before it transforms into another block. 10,000. Okay. And this guy was 500,000. Okay. I'm just playing with the numbers. So if I use this stuff, I would get a lot of temperature, but it would convert to obsidian pretty quickly. Right. Um, if I used uranium, it would last a while, but I wouldn't. it wouldn't be too hot. But it would be hot enough to get me started. Maybe I'm going to start with uranium. We'll try this, but ultimately your vortex tube is going to be your best. Because your vortex tube is what's really going to, it's going to be basically infinite. But that one uses pressure, right? So vortex tubes use pressure. So I'm going to start with something that's passive like uranium blocks. And then we'll go from there. Does that sound cool? Yeah, I like that. All right, so how are we for uranium? I have a very small amount of uranium. That's interesting. Why do I have so little uranium? Am I not processing it? I'm probably not processing it, right? Yeah, and it's a very low chance to get uranium ore. Can uranium ore be processed by Mr. Crusher Spirit? Because he may not. Yeah, he does. So he gets. Yeah, OK. So I could go put this uranium ore and give it to my Crusher Spirit. Let me go do that real quick. Is that cool? Because I want that uranium ore to be processed. If I may. So you're going to go in here. And you're cool. Uh, now I have to remember how to configure this guy. Was it just right-clicking him? Shift right-click. Okay. So iron, gold, copper, silver. I don't think I had uranium on the list. So if I do, it's a semicolon, star uranium. Oh, we've run out of space. That's not good. How about semicolon uranium star? That should be fine, right? Maybe that'll match. And you, semicolon star, uran. That should be cool. Now, did that save? It did. Good. Okay. 
Now, why aren't you handing things to him? Because you should be. It sounds like you're not. And that's... Yeah, no, he's definitely not handing things over at the moment. You get stuck every now and then, and I don't know why. And if I, if I take this item out of your inventory, I think he starts running again? Or no, do I have to push him? Is it... You think it's a pathing problem? What if I moved you over here? Yeah, see, now... Now you're cool, right? Let's get Magnet off, because Magnet's going to be a problem for me in this room. Okay. Now, do you think Uranium would be cool? Or no? Let's find out. Alright, so we should have some semblance of Uranium right now, but I'm a little worried by how little we actually have. But we got some, so that's cool. I'm just going to get a few blocks for now, and we'll try this out. I've actually, I don't know if I've ever actually done it this way. But, you know, we try something new in our series. That's how we roll. And if we want to go back to Vortex Tube way, we'll do it that way. It'll be fine. There we are. Okay, cool. Where am I in relation to? Okay, yeah, that works. So I'm thinking what I want to do is place this uranium block here. And then this might start heating up. Yeah, it is. Look at that. Sweet. And it should get up to um, 165-ish is where it'll bounce out. Because that's what it said uranium... Uh, does uranium blocks get to a, its temperature is 165 uh, so it'll it'll move up there relatively slowly not super fast uh, but we'll get there right and it'll be passive and I guess I, I'm curious to see at what point this turns from uranium into lead now the problem is we have 13 poorly insulated block faces which is just not ideal uh, is chisel in this pack I don't even know uh, I guess not I guess not. Uh, all right. So what I should find is something that counts as a solid block, but is not particularly large and annoyingly big. So uh, I don't know. What would be a good thermal thing? I think pneumatic might have something for this. Uh, no, probably. Oh, man, look at that. What is that? Netherite drill bit. Oh, that sounds cool. We should try that out. Let's see if there's something in the book about a nice, let's see, heat. Thermal resistance, compressed iron blocks have very low thermal resistance. Insulation. This is particularly noticeable to the refiner, which may expose phases, but is also true of any heat conducting block, including compressed. To avoid heat loss, ensure that no phases are exposed to air blocks. Any non-conducting block will do. It doesn't have to be a full block either. Trap doors and slabs will work fine. Okay. So we could just make a bunch of trap doors, and that would be a good starting point. I thought there was something specific for that, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am incorrect about that assessment. So in theory, we should be able to get a bunch of trap doors. So right now what's happening is it's heating up, but the heat is dissipating because we have too many exposed uh, sides on these blocks. Okay, that's cool. Should be good, right? So in theory now, we should only have five exposed sides? Four. Okay, that's even better. Is it only the, the, the these guys that can be exposed? So problems, no input fluid. All right, perfect. Well, that's kind of cool, right? So now this should build up its heat a little bit faster now because it's not losing the heat to the adjacent environment. Simple and straightforward. I'm probably going to have to vortex tube this because this uranium heat block is just not going to be enough. I'm assuming that I could put multiple heat blocks. Um, so if I got more uranium, like I could do this, I think, probably. All right. So first off, you don't have to be insulated at all on the bottom. Is that correct? I guess not. Uh, but then secondly, I'm assuming I can do something like this. And that would probably build up the heat a little bit faster. But I'm already not liking this. I was hoping it would be a little bit cooler. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm not I'm not a huge fan. I think what we're gonna have to do is either we go like liquid uranium oxide, which would probably be cool. 
Um, that, that has a huge temperature and a very little bit of thermal resistance. But after a while, it's going to turn into obsidian. So we're going to have to automate that. Or, or we just do a vortex tube, which is probably the way I'm going to wind up going. Um, but hey, let's not forget that we actually have to put fluids in here, right? Uh, so technically, I can remove this, right? So if we see right now, we've got one block face. But if I put the ender tank here, we should now have no problems. Beautiful. And I'm also assuming that my laser nodes should count. So again, one block face is poorly insulated. But if I put a node there, no longer a problem. That's good. I'm glad that he went that route with, you know, literally any block means insulation. Does this make sense from a physics standpoint? Absolutely not. Does it make good gameplay? Much better, yes. Because it would be very annoying to have to deal with that um, as a player, right? So, yeah, uranium sucks. I'm not a fan of uranium anymore. Let's, like, completely forget this, right? No thank you to uranium. We're going to absolutely go vortex. Okay. Um, so this needs, does it need pressure? I don't know that it does. I think it only needs heat, if I'm not mistaken. So when you place your vortex tube, there's a red side and a blue side. And as anybody could probably guess, the red side is the hot side and the blue side is the cold side. So place that in the world, go sneak underneath, see what side is outputting here. Um, and then you'll know, you know, bottom temperature is this, top temperature is that. Cool. Now, if we pump some air pressure into here, we'll be in a good place. So what I think I'll probably do, let's first get out our shrinky little device here. Boinks. Hooray. I love being tiny. Nice. Okay. So what I'll probably do then is this. What in the what? I placed it. Where did it go? Didn't I place it? I swore I placed something. We're going to have to go back to the videotape. Oh, there we go. We did place something. I knew I placed something. It just went there. I heard it place. Sometimes, you know, audio cues and all that are important. I don't think I need to be shrunk no mores. Okay. And that's cool. Uh, refinery controller. So now if I got you pressure, you would be good. So let's be ready to do that with one of... Yeah, pressure chamber valves. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Super quick. The fast... Like, that air pressure leaks super quick. So you want to be super fast when you're changing that. So if we look now... You can see on the tooltip up here, we're building up pressure and the bottom temperature is going to be very cold and the top temperature is going to be very hot. And we are now past the 100 degree mark that we need to be. So if I were to now get a laser IO card into here and on the up, you know what? I might be able to just, well, no, I'll leave it like this. Yeah. So how about on the up? Let's get you out. You can be an extract. A bucket a second should be plenty for now. We'll see. Right on the up. That's better. And then on this side, we will have a fluid insert, which means crude oil is going in and it's processing. Now it's going to use that heat. So you'll notice our temperature goes down as we're processing our fuel. So that's, you know, obviously another reason that I think the vortex tube is the way to go. Um, or like a really other hot type of temperature. So for this block, using uranium is bad. Other blocks might be okay. Now, here's one thing I always and kind of forget slash never really caught up on. But this guy is, you know, his bottom temperature is negative 273. So he is very cold, as cold as he can be. Um, and then the top temperature here is not really being as good as it can. So if I put a heat sink down here, does that help or hurt? I never really knew. Let's see what happens. No, not you on here. So this temperature should get nice and it should transfer. See, its bottom temperature is negative 20 C now, and its top temperature should be going up, right? So what's happening is all that cold needs to go somewhere. So by using a heat sink, it's kind of counterintuitive, but I think it transfers the heat to the environment 
a lot better. Um, get rid of heat. Be careful. Hotter than 60C or colder than negative 60C will hurt you when touched. Heat sinks only dissipate heat from the block they're directly connected to. To connect up many heat sinks, use heat pipes to provide more services. Okay. Uh, you can increase the effects of a heat sink by placing it in range of an air grate module. That's cool. That's about all you're going to tell me. But I'm pretty sure what's happening is now the heat sink is drawing the coldness away and dissipating it into the environment a lot faster than it would without. So by having a heat sink here makes the vortex tube more efficient. And that is cool. Uh, now, in addition, we obviously have some pressure. You are still but low on cold. So we're going to need to fill you up. But the goal here being that we should be getting fuels now. Diesel and kerosene and gasoline and LPG, which is neat. Um, now, I could just go with straight up pipes or fluid conduits of some kind, which I'll probably do. Uh, let's use mechanism pipes because I don't know that I need to use. So we have logistical transporters. We have universal cables. Maybe now would be a good time to get into mechanism fluid pipes, right? Uh, are they called pipes or tubes? I want to say they're called tubes. Or is that the gas? Pressurized tubes are for gases, right? So is it pipes? Mechanical pipes, transferring fluids. Yes. Okay, cool. So then you, we'll just get the advanced here for now. And then we can get more advanced later if we so desire. And that should be good. And you can make all those things. Yes. Yeah, no, no reason to go crazy with laser IO on this build. Um, you know, now that this is where I warp in at, I must have like got confused when I built my pressure chamber. So I guess that means that this, oh uh, yeah, this is the main entrance of the room. Yeah, no, I totally placed my pressure chamber wrong. I'm not rebuilding this. I'm just gonna reconfigure my warp position to be here. That's why I've been getting confused when I come in here, and that makes sense. That 100% makes sense. Fit that out for me, would you? Thank you. And you can go back to crafted mode, which is the way we want that in. So we'll get to crafting with this next episode. Um, for now, let's forget about you guys. Now, what are the chances that you auto push or no? Let's find out, I guess. So you, do you auto push? You don't look like you do, which is probably good for me. I don't think I want you auto pushing. Good. So what I want to have then is can my crescent dude work on this or do you need to be no you need to be the you need to be the guy uh, where's the mechanism doohickey there it is okay and then we're going to want tanks uh should we just use basic mechanism fluid tanks that should be fine. You can go away. You can go away. Three, four. There you are. There you are. There you are. And boom. We've got all the liquids going on now. And that's pretty good. All right. Sweet. So you're dissipating your cold. You are getting nice and hot. Remember, the hotter it is, the faster it'll run. So if you want to speed this up, the best way to do it is by um, getting more pressure into your vortex tube. You can see this is an example of a block that can accept up to 20 bars of pressure rather than just the five that we normally can. Uh, and this looks pretty good. So let's wrap up the episode here. Come back next time and continue messing with this stuff. What I'll probably do is break these two down into LPT and then use the LPT both as a fuel source and for getting plastics. For now, Delta 20 sign off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.